Christian for over 28 years talking about things that matter with people who care. Production of McQuistian is made possible in part by individual viewers, supporters of the Foundation for Responsible Television, the Hatton W. Sumner's Foundation, helping to educate the public about the fundamental principles of their democracy and thus be in a position to help formulate public policy. Moss Adams LLP, certified public accountants and consultants, providing industry smart tax, assurance and consulting solutions to help businesses and their owners succeed since 1913. The University of Texas at Dallas, creating the future. Well, have you heard of the Silk Road? Well, here's a clue. It's not the ancient trade route from the Mediterranean Sea through China to the Korean Peninsula, and it's not the Thai restaurant located in McKinney, Texas. What it was was a dark net website that enabled the buying and selling of drugs, among other things. On this program, you'll find out what North Texas college student was behind the Silk Road. You'll hear pros and cons of the war on drugs. You'll hear about law enforcement corruption and internet insecurity. And you'll hear the story of Ross Ulbricht and his jail sentence, which is beyond belief. Here's a brief clip of Ross's story. Three years ago, a young man named Ross Ulbricht was arrested. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole for creating a website. Ross believes passionately in liberty, free markets, and voluntary interaction. No victims came forward at trial to say Ross had hurt them in any way. Yet the government wants to take his life. The jury was not allowed to know that corrupt NSA, Secret Service, and DEA agents had free reign on the site. They stole over a million dollars, and it is still undisclosed what else they did. Precedent set with Ross's case will expand government power. It will impact internet freedom and privacy, First and Fourth Amendment protections, and much more. It will impact your future. I want to introduce you via, via phone. Unfortunately, she had some medical issues yesterday in the, in the northeast part and couldn't be here in person. But I want to introduce you to Lynn Albrecht. And Lynn happens to be Ross's mother. And she is uh, concerned because obviously her son is serving a double life sentence without parole for all of his nonviolent charges based on his role in the Silk Road website. Now, she's worked to free him, of course, but she's also become now a well-known advocate for constitutional protections individual freedom and privacy. So, Lynn, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, loud and clear. Good to be with you by phone, at least. Well, I'm glad your health has improved, for darn sure. Now, I, you know, I yeah. found you through a friend of ours named Terry Brock, and Terry Brock yeah. and you sort of did an eight-hour free ross in which you had um, a lot of people on, Doug Casey and some other people I know, and you raised a bunch of money for Ross's defense, but I think most people still don't understand exactly what happened. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened, and then we'll talk about some of the uh, folks who were involved in, in getting your son the kind of sentence that he got. Well, um, what, ha what happened is that um, Ross was arrested and um, brought to trial. Uh, in my opinion, the trial was a travesty. Um, there were, it's being appealed right now along with his sentence, which is barbaric. Um, and there are a lot of problems with, uh, there's a lot of problems with the whole case. Um, and I think that uh, fair trials are a pillar of our liberty. And the fact that Russ didn't get one, it puts us all in peril. And we don't really have time to go into all those details, but certainly they're on our website. Um, the fact that no victims came forward at trial to say Ross had harmed them. Um, and, you know, he has no history of violence, no priors, and that they would give him this unbelievable sentence is, well, it's not that uh, surprising considering a lot of the things they're doing with the dr drug war, but this is a pretty uh, excessive situation. And it's being the sentence is also being appealed and joined by, um, well, um, LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, you're going to hear from Neil Franklin later, um, but also a former federal judge, Nancy Gertner, um, Drug Policy Alliance, and Just Leadership USA, who all came forward to say, yeah, this is wrong. And there's 3,000 nonviolent people serving life in the system right now, and it, it's ridiculous. And you can go into a whole thing of what the prisons are costing and what... Um, 
the drug war is costing us in so many ways, and I'm sure you'll discuss it, but Ross is just um, kind of the poster boy of that right now, at least as it's gone digital. And it's, um, it's a horrible crime against humanity, in my opinion, and it's a disgrace. All right, I'm going to walk you through some graphics that you sent me in. First is graphic number 26, and I'm going to tell you what's on it, Lynn. This is a guy named Karl Mark Force and a guy by the name of Sean Bridges. Tell us who they are. We're looking at their pictures here on the screen. Yeah, they are in prison now. Um, you know, Sean Bridges was working for the NSA at the time that he was investigating Silk Road as well as Secret Service, and then there's Karl Force. They were at the core of the investigation and stole over a million dollars from Silk Road. But one of the things that people don't often realize is they were very um, accomplished in computer skills, and they had the ability to act as Dread Pirate Roberts, who they say Ross was. They had the ability to act as that person. They used lots of handles. They had, could change content on the site, in the chats, and marketplace. They had the, what one journalist called the keys to the kingdom. They could change passwords. And the evidence that was used at trial was subject to their potential tampering. And um, the appeal is saying, this is taints the evidence. And right. actually, one federal judge halved one of the defendant's sentences in half because of Sean Bridges' involvement in his case. All right, I'm going to look, gra yeah. look at graphic number 24 now, Lynn. And graphic number 24 has three other people on it, uh, in addition to your son, Ross, at the bottom. And that's Jan Slomp, Stephen Sadler, and Peter Nash, and it gives their sentences there. And then there's your son's sentence, double life without parole, yeah. convicted as a creator. These guys were convicted, uh, as the biggest cocaine and heroin seller on Silk Road, and the leading drug dealer had sentences, let's just say, significantly less than Ross. How do you explain that? Because I don't think, this, I don't think that the motivation for arresting Ross was drugs. I don't think his case is about drugs. I personally think that Bitcoin was very threatening. Uh, Chuck Schumer, who was behind this, spearheaded it, was um, on the Senate Finance Committee. Um, I also think that Tor and privacy on the Internet is not something the government likes. They came out and said in the papers that anyone who uses Tor has criminal intent. They're, they don't like that. Um, I, don't really, I think these sentences show that drugs are not a big issue for them. And truly, I think they use it. But I don't think that um, that's what it was really about. In addition, the, the judge used Ross's and Silk Road's philosoph libertarian philosophy as a justification for this sentence, which is actually a First Amendment violation, where she said, you started this site as a from a, your philosophy, and I don't know that you've given it up. All right, so well, basically she's saying she's putting him in a cage for life for a philosophy. And... Um, so that's why I don't think that they got this kind of sentence as Ross did, because I don't think they're threatened by drugs. I think they're, that they are threatened by ideas. And Ross is in there for making a platform, not for selling a product. He, he was not convicted for selling drugs. They never said he sold drugs. Um, right, but one of the things they did you know, say was that uh, there, wasn't there some conversation about him <laughs> uh, talking about taking out a contract on somebody? What was that about? Well, um, that was never convicted. They never convicted him of that. They never even brought it to trial or um, indicted him for it in, in, at trial. Um, this was never proven. Uh, this, th there is some, um, there is an indictment in Maryland that's been sitting inert for over three years now that has, um, and that includes that, but it's based on the testimony of this agent who's in prison. So, well, uh, listen, you know, uh, do, like, you, you, you know, I don't, guilty, why don't you, why don't yeah. you charge him with it? They didn't even charge him with it. Yeah. None, well, of, Lynn, his, none of his Lynn, charges were violent. Yeah. I understand. You just don't understand that all these folks who are DEA agents who are in jail and corrupt, don't you understand that that's really good testimony these days? You just don't understand the system, I think is your problem, yeah. don't you think? That, that it's, I, I couldn't quite hear that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, hear? I thought so. But, I was being sarcastic, Lynn. Sorry about that. Well, it's right. part of the system, right? Well, right. yeah. Exactly. I'm going to put up graphic 25, which will be the last one. And this is if anybody on the program uh, has an interest in helping in this case, there's freeroths.org. And uh, there's the Thank other way you. that you can contact Free Roth. So, Lynn, I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate uh, what you're doing and appreciate your obviously trying to get your son freed or at least knock the sentence down somewhat, et cetera. So I appreciate all the activism yeah. that you're doing. So thank yeah. you very much.